Hello there, YouTube. This is NecroStevo, and we are here with week 10 of the Pokemon Premier League. I know it's been a while, but, uh, some things happen, and now we're having our battle against the Mewcastle United. Um, with this battle in particular, actually, Sam was the original coach, or, uh, Fufu was the original coach, rather, for the Mewcastle United, but due to extenuating circumstances, he had to, um, drop from the league. Unfortunately, uh, originally, since I thought his team had just forfeited against our team, I didn't really team plan, and then I suddenly had to battle uh, Lars or El Cesar, which I'll leave his information in the description, because I've seen him battle before, fantastic battler, and um, so he's going to be our new opponent. So you can see his team to the right there, Starmie, Sylveon, Roserade, Mandibuzz, Talonflame, Mega Agron, Haxorus, Golurk, and Lantern. And of course, up to, um, I think, uh, the Mucasa United battle with the Maryland Torterrapins, or Kelly, they were undefeated, and that's still their only loss, I believe. So, um, Lars has his work just laid out before him there as far as coming in and just continuing on that path to greatness. Now, the team prep for my side was a little bit in crunch time here. And I didn't have time to breed everything because now work has gotten really busy for me, which is why we're going to actually end up playing on Showdown. I did want to go over my team really quickly for you all. Um, up first is going to be Garchomp. Uh, Garchomp's combined stab type attacks cover his entire team for the most part, bar Mandibuzz. And then Mandibuzz gets hit hard by Stone Edge. I do have an opportunity to set up a Swords Dance against um, something like a Lantern, because an Ice Beam won't KO me outright. Um, I'm really not sure what he's going to bring because he doesn't have as many Pokemon as other competitors do, and every one of his Pokemon has something viable against me. Now, most likely, I do believe we will see Starmie for the Rapid Spin support, Roserade for not only Technician Hidden Power Fire, but great neutral and super effective coverage against my whole team. Uh, we will probably see either Mega Agron and Sylveon or Mega Agron and Mandibuzz, just for the nice defensive core that's hard to break through. Lantern is really nice against my team too, barring Gardevoir tracing its ability and stopping it from Volt Switching or using Scald, depending on which absorb ability he uses. And um, Agron is just a great defensive pivot. Granted, he really struggles against my numerous ways of using Earthquake, but I don't really have a way to one-hit KO it, um, depending on the spread he runs too. Uh, so, um, yeah. Things to kind of keep in mind there. The spread here is just very basic because I want to make sure I can outspeed any of his threats that aren't running Scarf. Uh, and I just went with Life Orb just for extra muscle power here. I don't know if I'll get a chance to set up a Swords Dance, but if I do, that makes things even easier. Blastoise's spread is going to be much more specific because number one, we need enough speed to outspeed the likes of uh, Mega Agron should Mega Agron be invested in speed in any way. Uh, Blastoise also needs a little bit of speed just to help him outspeed um, like a max invested lantern. We want to make sure that we're outspeeding that. I don't think he'd have a max invested lantern, but if I can get off a hit with an Aura Sphere before he hits me with a Thunderbolt, that is fantastic. Uh, Scald is there to hit everything not named Roserade really because nothing else wants to take um, that. Starmie doesn't really like being burned, granted doesn't mind it, but then it has to switch out. It has to deal with the extra recovery. Uh, and of course, I could have run Dark Pulse here, but I honestly have several other answers to Starmie, so I wasn't as worried about Starmie in that context. Um, I did go Modest, because with that, even if he runs Max Special Defense Agron, I can 2-hit KO with Aura Sphere. And uh, that also allows me to apply a lot more pressure to his other teammates in case he runs an offensive Sylveon. Or um, even if he tries to bring Golurk, uh, just going max special attack means that he can't really take those hits the way he wants to. Up next we have Weavile. Very similar to Garchomp here. Weavile is incredibly important because I am expecting Roserade to come. I can also trap Starmie with Weavile, which is really nice too. Uh... I just went with a very basic moveset here because it works very well against him. You do notice the lack of low kick on Weavile for Mega Agron, but honestly, Weavile doesn't have any business on st in staying on Mega Agron anyway, and I can switch out to Defensive Rhyperior or Defensive Ferrothorn on Mega Agron 
or even Blastoise if he's trying to use Heavy Slam. Uh, Icicle Crash, the combination rather of Icicle Crash and almost any one other move can 2-hit KO his entire team. And also one hit KOs the likes of uh, especially defensive Mandibuzz doesn't like taking that, especially after rocks. Uh, Roserade takes around 70% from an Ice Shard, which is fantastic because Roserade is such a threat to my team. Um, if Starmie tries to switch out, it dies. And if it stays in, of course, it dies. So if I get Starmie into a nice little checkmate position there, I do get a nice free knockoff. If Starmie's in, then I fortunately I do have to go for Pursuit because the free switch into Aggron is too easy. Up next is a Pokemon I'm really f excited to run for this matchup, and that's a fully defensive Rhyperior. Uh, you do see 92 speed EVs. That's just to outrun uninvested Mega Aggron because I don't want to get hit by that if I don't have to. Otherwise, it's just there to be, I don't think he's going to bring Talonflame because I have uh, Rough Skin, Iron Barbs, and Rhyperior. But if he brings Talonflame, it could be an issue. So I want to really punish him for using that option if I'm able to. Uh, Rhyperior also gets off fantastic damage against the likes of the Mandibuzz, the Mega Aggron, and the Lantern. All those kind of struggle to um, uh, hit it really hard, barring Lantern's water type attacks. But uh, if, it's Lan if Lantern's in, I am going to Earthquake it if I figure out that he's not invested in speed. And if he is invested at all, then it's an easy switch over to the other defensive member here, which is Ferrothorn. Ferrothorn basically walls the Starmie and the Lantern, barring Hidden Power Fire. And even with that, with Mech Special Defense Investment, um, unless they happen to be fully invested in Special Attack, which I don't expect from Lantern, they can't one-hit or sometimes even struggle to two-hit KO. I do have to be very careful around Roserade because a Life Orb Technician boosted Hidden Power Fire has a great chance to one-hit KO Ferrothorn, um, which I have to figure out if his Roserade is Scarfed or if it's Life Orb or if it's defensive, because that thing is going to be a pain in the butt. And then of course Talonflame can use Flare Blitz, which will hurt a good bit too, but basically if Talonflame's in, switch out to Rhyperior, because that's the way we handle that. Um, this last member is going to be fun too, Gardevoir, with enough speed, again outspeed, max speed, Lantern, um, where I think actually I misspoke on Blast Toys earlier, that was enough speed to outspeed an uninvested Lantern, there we go. Um, or wait, I don't, see that's, this is the problem when you, uh, there was a reason for that speed. There was a reason and uh, a purpose, and if you are a marine animal, it was a porpoise but it was there, okay? But anyways, though, I do know for a fact that 244 is gonna help me outspeed Max Invested Lantern, and nothing on his team, except for Mega Aggron, can switch in on a Specs Moonblast. Uh, even if Aggron comes in, if I predict it, Focus Blast can do 99% of its HP to it, so literally one of any entry hazard up and Mega Aggron dies. I don't hope to be locked into Focus Blast at any point, but it's there in case I need it. Really, I'm going to be spamming Moonblast almost the entire time. Depending on what he brings, Gardevoir is actually a fantastic lead uh, with only really a bad matchup against the Mega Aggron or the Roserade, um, which would both force switches out to Ferrothorn and Rhyperior, respectively. So, um, yeah, Psy Shock is also nice in case I'm in a situation where I can predict the Roserade coming in, but I don't really want to have to do that if that makes sense, because really I just should be using Moonblast all the time, because even if Roserade comes in, I have the chance of getting a special attack drop, and that can make it easier for something else to switch in. So, nothing to rely on, but the chance of it is rather nice. Uh, notable abilities to trace here are going to be tracing Starmie's natural cure in case I get poisoned from Toxic Spikes, or in case I get burned from a will o from Talonflame. I can also trace Lantern's Water Absorb or Volt Absorb, which means I effectively Wall Lantern. Uh, and then um, I can actually also trace uh, the if the Mandibuzz happens to have weak armor, uh, which is kind of random. But if I can trace that and then pick up a speed boost from something, then we have a Specs plus one speed here. That would be kind of nice to have running around. I can also trace Filter from Mega Aggron, but I don't see the circumstance where something goes down and then I bring in Gardevoir to, to revenge kill. That seems kind of odd. But if I have to, that'll be nice to trace that ability too. So that's a quick rundown of the team. And thank you guys so much for taking a moment to watch it. We're going to go ahead and launch into the battle in a couple of minutes. I'll see you soon. 
Alrighty guys, so we are back and we can actually see that he ended up bringing Talonflame, Starmie, Haxorus, Many Buzz, Golurk, and the Mega Aggron. Not whom I expected. This is actually pretty interesting. Now, well, Stealth Rocks are going to be really nice to get up because he has the Talonflame and the Mandy Buzz. He, I feel like this is something that allows my Weavile a lot more freedom here because we don't see the Sylveon. I don't have to worry about predicting anything like that. With this team, though, I think he's probably going to either lead off with Talonflame or the Mega Aggron to get up his Stealth Rocks pretty soon, too, is the issue. So that means Blastoise might be my best lead. He could also have the Thunderbolt on his Starmie, which would be annoying. Um, but let's just write down his team here, though. I'm pretty happy to not see Roserade. I definitely thought he would be bringing it, just because of his ability to smack around things with his Stab. Uh, I'm also kind of surprised to see the Golurk, which means that either it might be a Scarf set, I could see Golurk running um, a Rock Polish set too. Uh, we're kind of going to have to fill that out, feel rather that out just a little bit. Oh, I forgot to write down Mandy Buzz. And he could have dual hazard removal between Mandy Buzz and the Starmie as well. Uh, hmm, interesting. All right. So yeah, I think actually it's going to be smarter here to just go ahead and lead off with Blastoise. Because I can Scald anything on his team, and if he wants to, he's probably not going to leave Starmie. But that'll also give me a chance to um, kind of just fill out if his Starmie has leftovers or not too, if he brings it in on the Scald. Okay. Man, talk about battling under zero sleep there. I was very happy that I was able to get off work on time too, because sometimes that's a big pain in the butt. Um, Garchomp wouldn't be a bad lead here either, because I can just smack things around, but I'm worried with him leading with Talonflame, so I don't want to get burned. Uh, I could also lead with Rhyperior, but if he leads with his... Um, I kind of want to pressure him into not being able to set up his rock, so that's why leading with uh, Blastoise is a little bit better. So we're going to go ahead and go with that. He does lead with the Starmie, so that means he might have predicted my Blastoise lead. And I could switch directly to my Ferrothorn here, but I'm also not sure if he has Hidden Power Fire. And he, I could have Dark Pulse, so he, I don't know if he really wants to stay in there, too. If he's thinking that I have Dark Pulse, he will probably switch out to his Mandy Buzz, because um, he can't one-hit KO me with Thunderbolt unless, say, he's he would need to be Specs, I think, to one-hit KO me with Thunderbolt. Um, hmm. So I could just Mega up here and click Scald. Just to see what he's going to do. I could also go directly out to Ferrothorn. Expecting the Thunderbolt. Uh, I could also take a possible Hidden Power Fire. But I really want to keep Ferrothorn healthy for that scenario. Um, he's probably not going to go for Psychic or Ice Beam either. Because those aren't really great options. He actually probably led this expecting me to lead Garchomp. Because he could have hit me with an Ice Beam. His Starmie could also be Scarf from looking at his team too. Um... Really, I'm expecting him to switch. I don't want to go straight into Ferrothorn, though, is the issue. I feel like I don't want to risk Blastoise or Ferrothorn, but although as long as I have one of them healthy, we're okay. I just have to be pretty conservative with their HP. So, I feel like it's unnecessary to overpredict on the first turn, but Ferrothorn is also really, really obvious. So he could, if he goes for Thunderbolt and he specs, though, um, he's much more likely to be Life Orb, so we're going to kind of go with that. Uh, let's just see here. Okay. So I think I'm actually, it's going to be safer to just stay in here and Mega Evolve and go for Scald. So we're going to go ahead and do that, just see what he goes for. He does end up switching out to the Mandy Buzz, so that's awesome. So that means he was expecting the Dark Pulse. I don't get the Burn, which is unfortunate, but now I can click Ice Beam, which is nice. Um, from that damage, though, it looks like he's physically defensive, I think. Because uh, that didn't do... That did a little bit more than I expected for it to do, actually. Mm, they did it right around... Yeah, I think he's physically defensive, Mandy Buzz. So that means an Ice Beam... Is going to stop him from roosting, which is pretty nice. I could also go for Aura Sphere to give me good neutral coverage on something trying to come in to resist the Ice Beam. He's much more likely to here to just go for Toxic, though. 
uh, which would be annoying for my Blastoise. So I could predict the Toxic and go out to Ferrothorn, but he can really just defog anything that Ferrothorn does, too. So really, um, he could also go for Heat Wave. I don't see that happening, though, honestly. Foul Play is also a move he can go for. Hmm. I really think I want to just throw off an Ice Beam here. In case he goes back to Starmie, too, then I can see what item he has on the Starmie. So yeah, let's just go for Ice Beam. Okay. He goes for Roost. Okay, so actually seeing that Ice Beam damage, that's actually confirming that he's probably physically defensive, and that was a high roll for the Ice Beam damage. So, um... I think I just want to go for a Scald here, because that way I at least have the burn chance if he's just going to keep on Roosting. Um... And then also, if I can, if he tries to switch here, expecting an Ice Beam, we'll catch something with the Scald too, like Mega Aggron switching in, or actually regular Aggron. Instead of resisting the Ice Beam, being a Steel type, he will be taking the Scald. And Aggron also hasn't Mega yet, so continuing to go for Scald is a little bit safer. Uh, scald is just spammable in that way, really. Um, so we, at least now we know that this is a, a physically defensive Manny Buzz, which makes things a little bit tougher for a Weavile. I'm going to need some prior damage with Weavile to one-hit KO it. And similarly with my Garchomp. Um, actually, let's see if my Garchomp can take it. Because I do have Life Orb, which does help considerably, because I'll get that nice, nice boost in my attack prowess there. He just stays in, and I do get the burn, which is fantastic, because he continues to go for Roost. That's exactly why I went for Scald there, though, in case he just tried to keep on doing that. Because now I can switch back to Ice Beam and we'll be whittling him down, which is really nice. Uh, Stone Edge coming from my Garchomp. Because I could just switch directly out to my Garchomp here, expecting him to roost, because he really can't do much. Uh, I could also go out to Ferrothorn, which would be great too. Um, I'm not sure what he's waiting on by roosting so much. I guess he's just trying to scout what with the full moves I have. I don't really want to show Aura Sphere yet, though, because then that'll confirm that I don't have Dark Pulse. Uh, so I really like just switching between Scald and Ice Beam. Um, I do think I want to switch directly out to Garchomp here, because he's either going to Roost again, or he's going to switch out to... I could really see the Aggron coming in to um, resist the Ice Beam. Uh... Ice Beam, though, is pretty non-committal, too, which is nice. So yeah, let's just Ice Beam again. He does switch out. Oh, man, that would have been a great time to Scald again. But this is really nice, though, because even though he switched into this, um, if he's offensive, I'm going to kill him with an Aura Sphere. If he's not, I guess he'll get up his rocks, which could be annoying, but he, he can't really touch me either. So this is a good time to reveal the Aura Sphere. I really do need to weaken this thing in order to open things up a lot for my Weavile. Um, unless he's going to go for the double into Starmie, I'm just going to hit him with the Aura Sphere. That is definitely an offensive Starmie, especially because we don't see leftovers there. That did a lot more than I thought it would, actually. Uh, so, no leftovers. He's probably going to go for Thunderbolt here, I would imagine. Uh, and, of course, this is still not mega which is really, really nice, honestly. Um, Starmie's probably going to go for Thunderbolt here. I'm really tempted to just stay in and Scald again. <laughs> um... How much will Scald do to Starmie? Assuming it's offensive. Because um, at this point, if he's Life Orbed, he's, he's really taking a lot of unnecessary hits, which is very nice. So Scald from my max special attack is going to be doing around 38% maximum. So that's nothing to really rely on. I really need to get a little bit more damage. But he also kind of has to make a play because he's been switching around so much. So if he's going to go for Hidden Power Fire, I feel like he would do it here. Hmm. And I really can't switch in Gardevoir yet either. I could have brought in Gardevoir on the Mandy Buzz. Actually, that would have not been a terrible play at all. Let's go. I Last time I just stayed in. So he might be expecting me to click Dark Pulse again. But now I feel like he, he also has confirmed that I don't have the Dark Pulse, because I would probably have Rapid Spin on Blastoise. Um, so Hidden Power of Fire would not be a terrible move. But let's just go out to Ferrothorn, because that's a little bit safer. He does just go straight for Scald. Hopefully I don't get burned. That's great, I did not get burned. Um, honestly, I, while I'm tempted to set up to just go straight for Power Whip, if he burns me with the Scald, that's going to be an issue. And he has several things I can switch in on the Power Whip. So really, Leech Seed is going to be a better move here, because I feel like he's either going to go out to the Talonflame, out into the Mandibuzz, 
or he's just going to stay in and scald or hit and power fire, all of which I will get a little bit of HP back from. Uh, so let's just go. It is interesting that he went for a scald, though. That means he might have predicted my Rhyperior coming out, or he just really wanted some residual damage on Mega Blastoise. Um, yeah, you watch your mouth, sir. You don't want to get you don't want to get ban hammered. Gosh, dang it! Oh no, great. Now I'm saying bad things too. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna go for the Leech Seed here. He, if he has him Power Fire, he's definitely gonna use it now. But um, if that's the case, I should just Power Whip too. But I feel like he's gonna switch to Talon Flame. If he's, but if he switches to Talon Flame, I get a free switch to right here here too. So yeah, we're gonna Leech Seed. He does have the Hidden Power Fire, and he's not. Specs, he's not life orb. What is he? Okay, that didn't do as much damage as I thought it would. I know I'm max invested, but all right, let's see what item he probably he might have a Colberberry too, just because we don't see any item on him. Let's see, fire to my. Okay. So we're going to have this with a sassy nature. Oh wait, no, I have a custom set already in here. Herba derpa derp. I always forget that when I'm loading in custom sets. There we go. Bam. Star me, a level 50. So, okay, yeah, so that did less than, so he either he has a Colbert Berry, or he's not max invested in a special attack. Um, I feel like he's just going to hit and power fire again. Um, I can't risk switching out here, unfortunately. So really, I think my best switch is back to Blastoise. Let's just, just see what he does. He actually goes to Aggron, which is fantastic. Oh, that worked out really, really nicely. So now here I get to fire off another Free Scald uh, or an Aura Sphere in order to hit the Aggron. Um, he can't keep switching into Starmie, which is nice because I'm going to keep on whittling him down. And now we've seen he doesn't have... Uh, Life Orb, and we know he has Scald and Hidden Power Fire. So let's just go for the Aura Sphere in case he stays in. I don't expect him to stay in, but that's my best overall move, because uh, either he's going to stay in or he's going back out to Starmie. We could also see a switch out to the Golurk to try to get, actually, he could try to switch out to Golurk here expecting the Aura Sphere, which would be annoying. Hmm. That is an interesting move that he can make. So Scald might be the better move because Aura Sphere won't KO, especially defensive at Mega Aggron from here anyway. So actually... I am curious. Let's just go with the tanky set. Aura Sphere will do around 70% max, so really Scald is the best all-around move because I can't KO him from here anyway. He goes back up to the star me. I will take that. Maybe I'll get the burn. I will get the burn. Awesome. So now either he has to switch out in order to preserve star me and get the natural cure, or he will just stay in and die. Um, I'm imagining he's going to go for the hidden power of fire right here because Ferrothorn is a really easy, obvious switch to bring in here. Um, and I can just continue to go for... Uh, I'm really tempted to, to make a very aggressive switch here. I could bring in the Gardevoir too, uh, just because he won't do that much to me because he doesn't have a life orb. Hmm. Getting rid of Starmie this early is really, really nice, actually. I don't really want my Blastoise weakened until I remove the Aggron or the Talon Flame, one of the two. So, um. Let's. I could just go right to. If I go to Gardevoir, how much will it do? To my Gardevoir. And I know I'm pretty sure he has a Colber Berry from the damage he's been doing. So if he has Hydro Pump, that'll do 57% to my Gardevoir, and then he'll die from the burn. He also might have Recover, so that's a thing too. So actually, let's just go. If I go out to Gardevoir, that forces in the Talon Flame, but then I probably can't take a hit from Talon Flame if he goes for an offensive move too. So that might mean that it's better to stay in with Blastoise. Because uh, I think it's way too obvious to switch out to Ferrothorn. So we're just going to go for Scald. As he just goes for Scald too. So I could have switched out there. 
But here, Mega Blastoise is going to pick up a KO on the Starmie, so that's awesome. That was a little luckier getting that burn. Granted, it would have mattered because I guess the burn forced him into a 50-50 whether he wanted to stay in or not. But the um, the damage he had sustained from that switching into the Aura Sphere earlier made it kind of... Uh, it made it matter less, rather. It made me have to predict less that he got that I got the burn. So here we do see Golurk. Golurk does do a lot of damage to my Blastoise with a uh, an Earthquake. He also might have an Iron Fist boosted Shadow Punch for me. Um, it's interesting that he brought it in so quickly, too. He, I don't think he can KO me from the HP level that I'm at, whereas I can KO him with the Scald very easily. Uh, what else can he do? He can go for Phantom Force. I know Golurk does get Thunder Punch as well, so really I need to keep an eye out for a Iron Fist, Adamant, Life Warp, Thunder Punch, or something like that. Uh, but also my Blastoise should outspeed a Golurk, which is nice, unless he's max speed investment. But let's just check out that damage from like a Banded, Ridiculous, Thunder Punch, or something like that. Um, especially if he's Iron Fist, because that's where I, I have slightly less experience there. Is with the the out the damage output rather uh, the Iron Fist version, so he will do a lot of damage to me, and he will kill me if he has. Okay, so if he has the Iron Fist Choice Banded Thunder Punch, that'll kill me. Um, I only have 176 speed, so he would have to be Jolly to outspeed me, and then then he won't be able to KO me. So here I really get to click Scald again for free, honestly. So we're just going to do that. And that didn't kill it, so he might be Assault Vest. He just goes for Earthquake, doing a lot more damage than I expected him to do. Uh, that did around 70... That did 53%. So that means he's not Banded, and there was no Life Orb recoil, so that's more likely that he's Assault Vested, actually, than anything. Because otherwise, Scald would have just killed him outright. Yeah, he's probably Assault Vested. Okay, so Blastoise actually might just be able to pick up another kill here. Um, Scald is still my best overall move. If he goes into something else, he's risking getting burned, and he can't switch it into Talonflame, so... We're just gonna Scald again. I'm really happy I put that, uh, speed investment onto my Blastoise just to make sure that I could outspeed things. Because I think he was pretty confident that he could outspeed me, or which is why he kind of made that risk. Granted, I don't know what his other play would have been. He could have gone into Mega Aggron, maybe? But then, I think he's trying to keep that healthier, too. Uh, so here we do see the Talonflame come out. And I can Healing Wish up my Blastoise later on, so I'm going to hold on to it. The question is, do I want to switch directly into Rhyperior, or if I want to predict him to try to do something different? Uh, so let's see here. He is probably... I don't see why he wouldn't... <laughs> go for very Mega Blastoise strats are very overpowered. I don't see why he wouldn't just go for Brave Bird here. He could go for U-Turn, but that's... Well, granted, Brave Bird is really easy to bring Rhyperior in on. If he goes for the Natural Gift Berry move, that's not going to do much to a max defense um, type of uh, Rhyperior either. Um, and if he is that type of Talonflame where he's using Natural Gift, then I don't have to worry about his held item being a choice ban, too. Uh, he could also annoy me if he burns me, so that would be kind of annoying. But, um, yeah, I feel like the switch is just out to right period. Let's see what he does. He doubles. Uh, yeah, that's an easy switch for my right period. And honestly, I'm just going to set up my Stealth Rock here to kind of pressure him a little bit more. And then if Manny Buzz has Defog, if he sets up his Stealth Rocks right now, he'll have to use it to get rid of him. I could also just go straight for Earthquake. But since I max defense, I'm really not worried about any hit from the Mega Aggron, honestly. So we're just going to go straight for Stealth Rocks. He doesn't Mega and he goes for the Heavy Slam. I think he forgot to click his Mega button. Is what probably happened right there. Um, so I get up my Stealth Rocks for free, actually. He is faster than me despite my investment. So he's a very offensive Aggron, too. Um, let's see if he forgot that Mega. I'm going to guess he forgot to click it. But uh, I do get to Earthquake for free here, too. Because if, even if he switches to Mandy Buzz or something, it takes the Stealth Rock damage, and then I get to Rock Blast. Um, but yeah, I'm assuming he forgot to click it. Uh, here he can either stay in and Mega and hit me again. 
or he could switch out into Talonflame or the Mandibuzz, and then I get a chance to Rock Blast them. Which, of course, I did run Rock Blast. In case he try he tries to run Charty Berry, then Rock Blast will be activated on the first one, and then I'll be able to pick up the subsequent hits. Uh... Hmm. Yeah, in this situation, he him staying in the in the regular form didn't really benefit him any, so I don't think it matters. I mean, he he would have done more damage to my Rhyperior if he was in Mega form, but I think yeah, exactly, it was a bigger disadvantage uh, to me. If yeah, if I had EQ'd there right off the bat, that would have been huge because I would have been four times effective, and his sturdy is already broken, so. Uh, that's pretty pretty big there if I had just earthquaked, but I did get up my rocks for free, so no complaining on my end whatsoever. Um, but stealth rocks up are huge; it pressures the talon flame a lot more. I do need to make sure I keep right period somewhat healthy, or at the least keep Gardevoir healthy. That way, I can healing wish it back up if I need to. And with the Pokemon he has left, uh, okay, so he does just stay in and Mega. He goes for Heavy Slam again, and, and honestly, it doesn't do that much more damage. Um. Yeah, here I'm actually thinking of switching to Ferrothorn because I want to save HP on my Rhyperior and he'll be whittling himself down with those heavy slams too. Um, now, Agron does get access to some elemental punches, so I don't really. And he also gets superpower too, so that could hurt because this is especially defensive um, type. Ferrothorn, but now that the his special attacker has been taken care of, Ferrothorn has a lot less utility here than my Rhyperior has. Uh, of course, Haxorus, Agron, Talonflame, and Mandibuzz generally use physical type attacks, so that means that uh, if anything, if I want anything to go down, it really needs to be the um, the uh, Ferrothorn. Now he might predict this and go Fire Punch immediately, but then. Um, he will, that's still a contact move, so I'm okay with that, honestly. Because um, he, if he's offensive, he's doing too much damage. I don't want it, uh, my Garchomp to take all that extra damage. So here we're just going to go into Ferrothorn. There's a fly buzzing around my face that is very distracting. I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I like how this is a small touch, but I really like how it says on the screen what's going to happen. It's like Ferrothorn will switch in, replacing Rhyperior. That's really cool. It's a nice small touch uh, that kind of gives you a little bit more information what's going on in the battle. That's the type of thing I would actually expect from Sun and Moon, honestly, with all the extra details they're adding to that. Um, with telling you which moves are effective or not when you when you kind of bring up the screen. So let's see what he does here. I'm I'm actually pretty I'm invested. I'm 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 interested as to what's going to happen. I feel like he's just gonna either keep on heavy slamming or he's gonna switch directly to Mandy Buzz to try to defog. Uh, which if he switches the Manny Buzz, I immediately set up a layer of spikes as he defogs, and then I get a free, uh, he has to defog again, basically. Um, barring having Heat Wave, which won't KO me. Uh, he could also do something weird like go into Haxorus, but I don't think he wants to risk taking all that extra damage on his Haxorus either. Uh, he could also try to bring in Talonflame on an expected Earthquake, trying to save his Aggron. If he does that, though, Talonflame, um... It loses a lot of HP and it's kind of forced to roost. And while it's roosting, I can either set up spikes or leech seed on it, really. Uh, because with Ferrothorn, he's done a great job and I don't want to necessarily risk something else getting burned when I need it to attack. So I would just kind of go for leech seed in that situation. I'm trying to do a little bit better in my narrations in talking about the different scenarios that uh, could be present in a battle. But it's important to always think of what's most likely. So while I'm kind of talking about all the different options here, he does just end up going for Heavy Slam, which is, that was the best case scenario, really. Because now if he goes for Fire Punch to KO me, then that's, whoop, I just bumped my mic. That's going to be great. Um, I don't think he'll do that, granted. But he also, he could switch out and switch back in and take one more hit from Stealth Rocks at 7% HP, too. So, really here I'm tempted to just go for leech seed expecting him to switch out um it, although if he tries to hit me with fire punch then i can just get up a free layer of spikes too so spikes is probably my better overall move if in case he has the fire punch so let's see if he has it man if i had just gone for earthquake earlier when he forgot to mega that would have been that would have been actually pretty pretty entertaining but i'm all for having a good battle so 
I, I do kind of prefer it in a way. It's like, okay, get your mega going so we can get back to the awesome battle here. I do hope everyone's having a good day while they're listening to this. Okay, so we actually just end up exchanging hazards. I'm okay with that. I am going to go ahead and go for a leech seed here. Okay, he does just end up going for fire punch. So we have a delicious double down. I thought he would have it. It's interesting that he did take the time to set up the stealth rocks first. Um, he's definitely going to go out to Talonflame right here, though. I would imagine so, at least. I'm actually going to go out to my Garchomp. Because if he goes out to Talonflame, I can just go for Dragon Claw. Because there's nothing Talonflame can go for that'll KO me. And if he goes out to Mandibuzz, then I can just set up a Swords Dance. Because he'll probably want to defog. Uh, so Garchomp's going to be the better switch in here. So Ferrothorn, you did a great job, buddy. You went down because of the Aggron. And the Aggron went down because of my Ferrothorn. Jelly good. My Iron Thorn, Pharaoh. <laughs> Not a 6 0. Yeah, it. That's, uh, it's interesting, I definitely share that mentality whenever I'm battling, if if things are getting kind of weird during the battle, then my mentality becomes less about losing and making the battle as close as possible if I know that there's, okay, it's gotten to a point where I can't win. So I do correctly predict the Talonflame coming out, which is great. He might just burn me here, but even if he burns me, I'm still going to kill him with the Stone Edge. Um... I do wonder if I can't just go for, if I get burned, if a Dragon Claw will still kill him with a Life Orb. So let's check that out really fast, actually. Because Dragon Claw is a much safer attack. And... Talon Flame. We'll just assume the worst that it's... Bulky. And he's going to be running Will-O-Wisp. That's what we'll assume. Okay, so Will-O-Wisp, if I am delightfully or not so very much actually if i am delightfully burned my dragon claw only does 38 percent so yeah i kind of do have to go for stone edge here uh hmm. okay interesting um he could also roost and get back to full hp and i could go for earthquake which would be hilarious i could also just swords dance here because if he's bulkier he can't really one hit ko me and if he's offensive, he's going to be taking a lot of damage here. But I feel like Dragon Claw is my safer overall move. Um, no, Stone Edge, because he could also just switch out to Manny Buzz here too. Hmm. Okay, we're going to click Stone Edge here. He does go for Natural. He had the Natural Gift, but it was Ice. Wow. Okay. Did not see that coming. Very <laughs> willing to admit it. I am happy I didn't switch in my... um. Wow, I thought if he had Natural Gift, it would be a type so that he could hit uh, Blastoise. Did not see the Ice type Natural Gift coming. Garchomp ends up dropping without being able to do anything there. That was a very good play. Um, I do get to just go out into Rhyperior here now that he's already burned his Natural Gift. He can't really touch Rhyperior, which is really, really nice. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. Um... And here, I think I just go ahead and go straight for the... I could go for Dragon Tail, in case he tries to switch out to the Mandibuzz to take a hit. But really, I think Rock Blast is a better overall move. Um, yeah, we're just going to go straight for Rock Blast. Dragon Tail would, would be also nice in case he goes for... If he goes for the uh, Roost, then Dragon Tail is really nice in that situation. But even if he Roost, he's still weak to... The rock type attack so we're just gonna go for rock blast if he brings in the haxorus then uh it's probably a dragon dance haxorus so i was also worried about scarf haxorus but if he brings it in it's probably dragon dance <laughs> i wish we could make garchomp great again it's unfortunate that uh lara's playing so well with that uh natural gift ice for those of you who don't know how natural gift works natural gift is a physical well, yeah, it's a physical type move that the typing of it changes based on the berry that you're holding. So, if you're holding, like, a Yachi berry, then it turns into an ice type move. The base power of it varies, but when you're Garchomp and you're four times weak to ice, generally that doesn't matter too much. Uh, so, yeah. Um, I'm also a little bit worried about getting burned here, which would be less than ideal. But even if I get burned, I still have the capability to shuffle things around with Dragon Tail. Uh... And of course, I still have the ability to Healing Wish up with my Gardevoir. So, that's actually great information to know that he was Natural Gift, because now he can't be Bandit or Life Orb. 
and um, if he's not Bandit or Life Orb, I don't think he can one-hit KO my Gardevoir, which is really, really nice. So uh, I do need to see how much Gardevoir specs um, Moonblast does, so I know if I need to go straight for the Moonblast. Or if I need to... Actually, yeah, Gardevoir specs Moonblast is enough to, to one-hit KO there, so that's great. So here's the Rock Blast. Let's see how many hits I'm able to get here. If I'm able to get four, I'll kill him. Oh, nice, and he's going to die to the burn. Fantastic. That went very well. So that means that uh, he has to go into the Haxorus now. Um, Manny Buzz went down the right period. Oh, no, wait. It went down to the burn, actually, so that's Blastoise's kill. So yay for that Skull Burn earlier. So now um, with his Haxorus in, I feel like he has to Dragon Dance up. And really, I just want to Dragon Tail here. And that will also cover any... Weird op. He could also substitute, I guess. But, um, I don't think Earthquake will kill me from this range. And that'll force him to take more damage, which will ensure that he's in range for my, um, Weavile's Ice Shard. So we're just gonna bounce him out of there, get rid of his boost, bring in the Talon Flame. And that is fantastic, because I just get to click Dragon Tail again. And that means if he roosts here, I'll bounce him out again. And he'll take even more damage. So he actually ends up KOing himself with a Rocky Helmet. And I think actually that's going to be a good game. Uh, so yeah, I'm happy I went ahead and packed the uh, the Dragon Tail there. And that's going to be a good game. Low Kick is going to hit that Rocky Helmet. And that is going to be it. Awesome. So guys, thank you so much for watching the battle. Um, definitely good game. And thank you to Lars, of course, for working with my schedule and getting this battle done. Uh, I it's nice when your prep pays off like this. I do think that the the skull burn in the beginning against the Mandy Buzz, uh, that that definitely was helpful because of course we just had that burn and whereas he might have outsped and been able to roost up there, so that might have ended up ending and mattering in the end. But I do think that overall, a lot of the plays I made helped out too. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Goodbye now.